Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers and you're here today to learn how to make a pigsty. Well, it could be another um, animal um, enclosure of course, but uh, we're getting ready for our three little pigs, which is the subscription box for May and they're all sitting there waiting patiently to get into their, um, into their um, new pigsty, brand new, not even muddy yet. And um, I wonder which one is going to fit into the into the little shelter there. And um, so hopefully you can follow this. We are using our um, structural core felt, which comes in different sizes. But I've got one here, which is the um, it's the 50 by 68 centimeter, and it comes packaged like that. It is um, made entirely from wool, and um, and has got a hessian scrim inside. So if you um, don't want your pigsty one day anymore you can actually uh, compost it in your compost or you could um i i actually have one of these mats that i sit on because it's nice and warm and um softens the chair a little bit as well i don't sit on it right um right this very minute but usually i do and with all of our live streams which are usually on a tuesday at 1 p.m um um, we're back in British summertime and then they get restreamed on Facebook at 7 p.m. on the Thursday. So if you're watching this today, Tuesday, the I have no idea what date it is today. Um, Friday is the 1st, April 30th. Uh, so maybe the 28th today, I think. I'm hoping 2021, of course. Um, you can win yourself um, a Princess Ilia kit. And this is what's up today. Um, she um, she is up for grabs. It's got everything in it to make this beautiful um, princess, including the tools. So she's a little bit like our fairy collection, but um, but uh, um, it's a princess. It's a standing princess. I should have brought her with me to show you. But let's have a look what you need to do to win her. So what we would like to know is if pigs could fly, tell us a lie. What? is the lie that you would like to tell us so let's give us a laugh give us it's all for fun and of course we pick people at complete random so leave a comment whether you do this on youtube today live on tuesday or whether you do this live on thursday on facebook at 7 p.m then um, you can win yourself a prize if you're watching this at any other time i'm afraid to say you won't be getting anything but you can certainly buy the kit still it's in our repertoire it's available to purchase now so if you have fallen in love with this beautiful yellow princess then um, do and get your kit um, directly from our website so um, we're, I'm going to put this um, to one side at the moment um, I should also just give you a little bit of a heads up I've had an accident this morning <laughs> Um, I did my early morning exercise and it involved um, it involved um, running and um, at the very end of my um, workout I had to finish off by the last bit of run and I fell flat on my nose which um, was quite a spectacular fall and um, if you had seen me you would have seen me waving my arms trying to regain my um, um, balance but it didn't happen so I fell um, and it was really rough you know these really coarse pavements with um, yeah so anyway I fell on there and I hurt my hands so I have um, tried really hard to cover them up so it doesn't look too gory but I, mean, I won't give you a close-up because I can see that um, the plasters aren't um, exactly very um, blood proof um, and I've hurt my knee as well but I'm fine nothing's broken just I've just left some skin behind basically so I'm I'm all good I was just as soon as I um, landed as soon as I was on the floor like sprawled out like this I thought no I've got a live stream at one o'clock what am I gonna do with this so I um, tried really hard this morning to um, find the right kind of plasters I've done about a 20 mile round trip I've also spilled hot coffee over myself I've tripped over a cable and um, by trying to put um, the lid onto my clover tool which is somewhere here there well I thought I was putting the lid on I was actually just putting the extension on I poked all three needles into my hand as well so and now the computer crashed so I hope this is the end of it and the rest of the day will just be completely event um eventless is that a word anyway that was maybe just the universe telling me stop rabbiting on about your fall so I will so basically I'm I'm here and I'm fine and everything's good and we're making a pigsty and um, I do apologize so I think we've got a few people here watching today. So hello to all of you lovely people, um, including Sandra, Rachel, with Daniel. Alicia is my um, my um, lovely helper today. Jane is there. 
Um, Eva is there. Vampire Venom is there. Jill is there. Diane is there. Um, Carol is there. Joe is there. Another Claire. Catherine. Um, Serena is there. Bridget, all the way from um, Australia. And um, Diana. Emma. And um, we're getting all these um, amazing comments in now. So if pigs could fly, what's the lie you want to tell us? Let's read a couple. Um, Joe says, if pigs could fly, I won't buy any more little petting supplies. <laughs> I like that lie. If pigs could fly, I would be a successful creative, not just feeling, not just felting. Oh, that's not a good lie. I'm sure you are the best. Well, it is then. It must be a lie. It must be a lie. Um... And um, Meg says, if pigs could fly, I'd be a millionaire. If pigs could fly, I would always have a clean house and lots of time for crafting, says Diana. Um, and Jill says, if pigs could fly, I wouldn't be running outside again. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And Jennifer says, if pigs could fly, I would give up felting and take up housework. Oh, I'm glad that's a lie. Um, so... Um, oh, I like this, Alicia. Yeah, it was the pigs that were causing the trouble. Nothing to do with me. Right, let's start this pig sty. So the one that is here measures about 25 centimeter in width and then um, just under 50 centimeter in length. And that wasn't exactly planned. I just, I don't, I don't know. I just did it. But if you've got one of these smaller pieces, which is the fat quarter of the structural core, then you can definitely have, you have definitely enough to make that size and even a bigger one and that is the size of it so there you go and one of the um, sides is fi is um, 50 centimeters so the width of this is 50 centimeters but what I will say is you have to put um, a surround here on um, like on the pigsty so this is this is sort of like the fence or the wall or whatever you want to call it and it's about five centimeters tall and um and so that needs to fit around there as well so what i would do is i would actually um take um and i'm just going to measure this now so um the you need a piece of um this is all already on on youtube i just have to remind myself what i'm doing so you need um, 35, 70 plus 70 plus 25, 70 plus 50. So you need about 120 of this, um, length, but you don't have to have it all in one, um, strip. So let's, um, keep this piece of felt intact and I'm just going to cut um, it into there so I'm making use of the 50 centimeter length which is the length of this so if you imagine that and that is how I'm going to do it so I'm going to cut a 25 centimeter strip off my long part using some oh and I also should tell you the structural core is really really dusty when you start cutting it and um, when we cut it in our workshop we're actually um, wearing masks it is it you get tiny little fine wool fibers that come off they don't do you any harm it's not like they're sort of toxic or anything like this but if you have problems with bre with breathing if you're asthmatic or maybe you already suffer from some allergies i mean i've had hay fever, hay fever so bad i probably don't want to handle much of this stuff um when the hay fever is bad. So I've cut the um, the width and the length. So I've got a, a 50 by 25 centimeter piece here now. And now I'm going to put the surround on it. And that's about 35 centimeters. So there's a little area here, which is free, but you don't have to do this. You can just go all the way around. So this is a bit of a design your own pigsty um, scenario, but I'm just going to um, see how I go with this. Um, so. 35 centimeters is from here to there. And I'm going to um, make the um, part separate, even though on my um, original one, I've made them in one joint long um, uh, continuous piece. So I've got one 35 piece here. That's five centimeters. Don't go higher than five centimeters or it will collapse. So that's one strip for one um, side. I'm going to go straight in there and cut the second. 
So remember, don't go higher than five centimeters. Lower is better, but you don't want your pigs to escape. So that is the second strip. So that's the two sides done now. And now I need the two ends, which um, I've, I measure them at 25 centimeters. So you could actually cut the width of your base. As always, I am the worst for um, using anything uh, like a ruler. I just measure, I just do it according to measure and then cut another one straight to the side because that way you have the same length and you don't need to measure it again. And we build a door into that as well. What you also need is um, a, a, a needle that could be a dana or it could be an embroidery needle, anything that sort of takes quite a sturdy thread. And I can tell you now, I'm absolutely covered in this little, in these little bits of, um, of fluff there now. So I've got um, my piece here, that's 50 by 25 centimeters, just to reiterate. Then I have got two um, side walls, they're 25 centimeters, so they fit nicely onto that piece there. And then I've got two 35 centimeter lengths. Um, and I'm allowing to have a bit extra so that it doesn't like the whole surround, but you can do the whole surround. That's absolutely fine. You've got, if you get that size piece, you have enough to do this. I'm going to use embroidery thread. I'm sort of, I was very tempted to use a bright color um, so you can see the sewing better, but I'm actually going to stick with brown. And so you need a good length of the, I would definitely um, double it up, even though it's quite strong. And you need your sewing needle. I'm going to dare go overhead and see if um, if anything's even visible. So there's my, um, trying to keep my palms out of my, um, out of the screen. There's my needle. I'm going to thread this into here. And then what I'm going to do is I've got, um, I'm going to start with one side. I don't, I don't tack it or I don't, um, I haven't sort of put um, um, pins into it. But what I'm going to do is I start to secure the thread. Oh, that's not doubled up. Let's do that first. I'm going to start to secure the thread underneath the mat where nobody can see it. You can put a knot on it or you can just um, um, go back and uh, forth a few times. It's entirely up to you. And get that, get that set get that in place and then I'm going to go straight into the side so that's the first bit is I'm actually keeping it flat and I'm going straight into it and back again but the next time I'm tipping this now so that it's at a right angle so you can see this is, a, is at a right angle and now I'm going into this with an over stitch so I'm going over so that the 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 part the thread um, runs over the side. I'm going to do that all the way along until I get to the end of my strip that's here on, on the side. So that's one of the long sides of my pig style that I'm making here now. And it's definitely worth pulling this really tight um, because you want this to be a nice, um, a nice sturdy um, construction. So, and, and if you're sewing it that way, look, it stays, it stays upright like that. So I'm going to go along here and speed my work up a bit. You can do this. If you're doing this with me, then um, just do it with me. Otherwise, um, maybe we can have a little conversation about what else is coming up at the makers in May. We've got um, of needle felting and then we're doubling into wet felting as well. We've actually got um, a new product online now, which is our wet felting mat that you can use instead of bubble wrap so if you want to get ready for that that is one of the products that you can you can get otherwise bubble wrap is absolutely fine but if you need to buy it then maybe just think about getting something that will last a bit longer because we're trying to cut plastic out of the world um, or at least single use plastic if we can't help using plastic and um, so I've got a got to the end of here just getting rid of my thread need a new one and um, also we have a wonderful um, wool mix, which is a wet felting starter mix, but it also is really great if you're into making fairies because it's got a lovely selection of tops and bats, which work brilliantly for, for either. Um, I think with that embroidery thread, I'm just gonna not double it. I don't think it's necessary. So pick up where you've left it off. 
st secure your thread before you pull it tight. Go in a couple of times, in and out. Remember the base nobody can see. If you've got bits of um, um, hessian sticking out, you can just cut that off um, later on or sew it in whichever way you want. So all I'm doing right now is I'm securing the side wall onto this pigsty and um, I've, I've almost done one side. And then when I get to the end of this, at some point you have to decide where you're going to put um, the door, if you're putting a door in there or a gate, I should say. The gate is, is basically just a little bit of this strip that you're not securing, so it could be anywhere. Now when you get to the end of it, all I'm going to do is I'm going to add this part onto it, which means that I've got to sew up this little, this little seam here as well, so I'm going to do that first. So I'm going, again, you just do the overstitch. Um, you don't need to do a pretty stitch. The wool um, sort of absorbs the, the, the thread that, or the wool that you're using. You can use anything that's sort of really nice and strong that you can pull tight. So now I've secured these. I've made a nice corner there. And I'm going to continue sewing now the side by... Um, going into here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the door at the front this time last time I put it on the side but I think it works better at the front and so I'm going to in a minute I'm going to skip a bit of um, of this um, of this side or front panel right about here so I'm securing my thread so you can decide where you put the door but this is how you make the gate or the door, whatever you want to call it. So I'm securing my thread and then you can come out the other side to get rid of it all together. A couple of stitches. So I'm using a cotton embroidery thread in, um, in brown, but if you've got wool, you can use wool. If you've got, um, I don't know, sort of anything that might be um, uh, in harmony or in 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 a in a color way that will um, not look too bad on on your um, brown wool felt, and now I've got I'm going to give it about ten centimeters. I'm not going to sew it on for about ten centimeters, so there's a gap there now, and I'm just uh, ignoring that stretch there, and I continue on the other side. I'm going to cut that gate in a minute, not quite yet and finish off that last stretch here until I get to the corner. Will my, will my thread last? Let's make it last. So in and out and um, basically you're going over the seam so you're not you're not doing a back stitch or a forward stitch or whatever they're called just just an over stitch that's what I know it as. So you're just going over the seam until you get to the end Secure your thread. Um, well, if you if only if you've come to the end of your thread as I have done or the end of your wool, secure it so it doesn't um, pop open. And then I show you. So you have now got a piece where you can stick. Oh, get rid of that palm of my hand where you can stick your fingers in. And all you need to do now is cut um, down one side. You probably need little sharp scissors because you don't want to cut into the um, other. You don't don't want to cut into the base, and you don't definitely don't want to cut into the thread. And now you've got a um, a door that opens, so that's um, a very makeshift thing for for now. And then you're gonna sew the other side, and I'm going to do this. I've just turned my whole work around, and I'm going to sew this now from this end to that end. So that's my next um, um, bit that I, I've got to do. Um, whilst I'm doing that I'm going to go back to the big camera and let's just see what um, everybody's doing. Um, I think we should have a contest who has the most decorated pigsty. Oh yes that's the fun bit is of course to decorate it because you can needle felt onto this structural core really really well. So it um, it is 100% wool and if you're using um, your felting needle and wool there is absolutely no reason why you can't make 
a palace of a pigsty. Let's have a palace of a pigsty. I think that would be amazing to see who whose pigs live in a palace. Um, mine are very poor pigs. They live in a in a very poor pigsty. And um, so when you um, start sewing the other panel on, if if you if you split it into two like I did, remember you've got to sew them together first. Still using that same stitch, go over the seam. And then when you have done that, then you can sew the rest of that panel, of that side panel on, the wall, whatever you want to call it. My stitches are about um, maybe one to one and a half centimeters apart. So they're not too close together, as long as you can pull it nice and tight. And I'm going sort of into the felt, probably about um, half a centimeter. So it's, um, I don't want to catch, I don't want to be too close to the edge because um, it, it can sort of slightly unravel. So you need to really get that uh, needle into the hessian scrim that's inside um, the wool that helps it to hold together. And that is the process how it's been made. Um, and yes, just be aware there is a lot of fine little fibers that are sort of coming off. Um, I'm really excited to show you all the um, subscription boxes on Friday. So we have our three subscription boxes that are changing over on Friday the 1st of May. And we will be having the three little pigs, as I, as I mentioned to you. You can make different breeds of pigs to the ones that we are featuring um, because you get um, different colors in your um, sub, sub box. But I'll talk about that on Friday. So remember, this is at 11 a.m. on YouTube. Friday the 1st of May where we are unwrapping the subscription boxes including the fairy box which is the emerald fairy I'll give you a little peek of her in a minute and also the surprise box which is paint a picture it's a nice one I really I mean they're all nice but every time I see um I see them I think oh that's a nice one so it is definitely a nice one so I've got to the end of this side now and now I'm going to Take my last panel, which fits perfectly into the end here. So I'm going to sew this again. I've got to sew the sides up first. If you've got one long continuous um, strand, then of course you don't have to do that, as I said before. And um, once I've sewn the side on, I'm going to have a quick look what um, um, what else we've got on offer this this month for you in terms of our free tutorials and that's just hard luck but my threads just run out so I've got to secure that and start a new one and then that's the last stretch I've got to do on the side here and then I give you um and then I will show you how to do the shelter some of you may have done a, a, a similar shelter already because if you've had the badger and woodland um, subscription box last year then um, Sophie will have shown you how to make the shelter and how to work with this structural core so this might be not new for you but um, if you've never worked with this this might be quite revelationary um, especially if you are now thinking what what else can I use this uh, structural core felt um, to do and I've got a bit of a knotty situation going on here but I think it's okay Right, last stretch of the pigsty being completed now. So what will help it if you want to stabilize it, you can actually felt um, into the sides as well to, to make it. Let's take this one off for a minute and you can see better. Um, you can felt into um, the sides to stabilize it. But I, I, I think because of the size that it is, that's one of the reasons why I didn't want to go too big. Because the bigger you go, the, the more floppy the sides will become. Um, there's only so much structure in it. Um, then you, you can secure them by felting into it. You could also double the walls up. So you could use two strands um, to sit side by side. That's another way to make them stronger. Um, yeah, so I think that's sort of maybe solutions if you want to make a really big pigsty because you want your pigs to be, um, I don't know, free range, free range in a pigsty. Um, my pigs are free range because they can go and sit in the meadow. This is just their safe place. 
Um, but that's um, that's entirely how, um, up to you how you want to do it. And of course, like I said, if you're not interested in pigs, this might be quite nice if you're wanting to make something for a child. Um, maybe you're keeping horses or ponies or other farmland animal, cows, goats, sheep. Maybe that can be their pen when they're not out and about frolic, frolicking in, in the in the fields. Right, so I've got to my very end here. I'm going to just um, continue sewing that corner shut and then I'm done with um, the surround of this. I, I would love to see the ideas that you are coming up with in um, making this pigsty even more special. I know we've got so many creative people out there and, and I'm sure that if you um, think about it, you will come up with all kinds of um, ideas and I, I I would love to see them and um, share them with us. Please do. We are um, on Facebook. We have a group uh, called Every Wanamaker where we welcome for you to share ideas and your makes and things that you you have made inspired by the makers so please do join that group we are just asking you to answer three questions and um, please do answer them and then we can let you in and uh, you can become a part of the makers family it's a very friendly uh, group and um, very supportive there you go I've got my um, my pigsty done it's got the the four sides on it's got a door here um, or a gate, I should say. You can, what I've done with the other pigsty, you could sort of shape it a little bit underneath so it looks a little bit more, or it looks a little bit different from the rest. So you could have it um, slightly off the ground so it doesn't drag on the ground. And um, if you wanted to, you could also make it um, um, more, you could shape it up at the top as well. So I've just made it a, a little bit thinner. So um, this is basically the base of your pigsty. I'm just going to show you what's happening, um, the, the May live streams, what's coming up. So we've got coming up in May, we have got, first of all, next week, the um, bug in the mug, which um, obviously when you buy the uh, wool, um, the, um, the needle felting pack, it comes with a mug and you can make this adorable uh, bug. He's quite big. I'll show you the real one in a minute. You might have spotted him already behind me. And then we've got the following week. We have got coming up. I th um, can't actually quite remember, but it um, uh, should come up any minute now. Yes, here we go. Uh, we've got the wet felted flowers. For this, remember, you can get your wet felted wool mix, your starter pack. You get um, a load of load of uh, wool, wools in there and it, it makes um, 20 plus flowers. Um, so you have lots and they're, they're good size flowers as well. So they fit in the palm of your hand. And there's a free tutorial for this. And we are just uh, listing new products such as the wet felting mat. We've also got some um, special wet felting soaps that are um, hopefully live by now. And then on May the 18th, we've got the little fishies, which are, um, there is a wool mix for that as well, which is the exotic wool mix. So get yours and then you can make 24 fishes with this. You will also need water soluble paper. That's the other thing that's required here. And there are 3D fishes, even though they start out as a flat fish. So that's um, coming up on the 18th of May. And um, they are really fun to hang up maybe in the bathroom or maybe in a child's room. You can turn them into mobiles. And then, of course, to go with the pigsty and the pigs and maybe even the ponies next month in our sub box is the needle felted truck. If you've had our subscription box in the past with the donkey, then you will have already seen this truck. But um, that we have a free tutorial for um, carrots and vegetables on our website already. So you can fill them with that. Or maybe you just fill them with flowers. Maybe it's a flower plant pot um, or anything like that that you're making. Or maybe it will just go into your um, into your pigsty, why ever not? So that's basically um, all happening on Tuesdays at 1 p.m. and replay on Facebook at 7 p.m. And um, let's have a quick look what else we've got here. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, this I, I I get I get caught up in. Um, 
um, I get caught up in the conversations, but I'm reading back to front, so then I, I get curious what it is, and then I go all quiet, so I do apologize. Um, okay, I've got to stop doing that. I'm not. I'm just going to read um, If Pigs Could Fly. Um, if Pigs Could Fly, fly the town I live in would make the news for positive reasons. I'm in Crawley, if any, if every, anyone is wondering. Oh, okay, right. Um, yes, we, we only want positive news, so we're not talking about this. Um, if Pigs Could Fly, I'd exercise and work out routinely, says Jude. And Carol says, I'm going to make the three little pigs for my great nephew to go with the story. So I may make three separate houses for the wolf to blow down. Well, there is a point. We do have a wolf. Um, a wolf. Um, we've got a wolf pack as well. <laughs> um, needle felted wolf pack. That's what we have got. So um, if you want the wolf to go with the pigs, he's already there. Um, he could be blowing instead of howling. So yes, so maybe the wolf is blowing the house down. Not this one, because you made it. So let's um, see what we use for making the shelter. So this is something that you might have to customize when your pigs are um, with you, but I'm lucky because I've already got pigs here. So you could cut it. Um, so it's going to be like a, a little tunnel and you want it to be tall enough so that the pig actually fits in. And um, I'm making just one because I think one is is probably um, is probably uh, the right size so it doesn't collapse. Like I said before, this structural core is brilliant, but it isn't it. You can see it's quite floppy. So I'm, I've cut a piece here and I've, I've, if you saw me, I measured it that the pig actually fits into it without knocking his head. And um, all you need to do is now find a place where you're going to position your shelter for the pig. I would say maybe in a corner. So you've got lots of space here still left and the pig can look out on this side and come out in, on this side. And you're going through the same thing again, what you did earlier, you're sewing this onto, onto the felt. So you're sewing the felt together and um, you're doing this in exactly the same way by doing an overstitch. So start your, and this is the only bit of sewing that you need to do. Everything else is um, needle felted decorations after that. And um, yeah, so I've threaded my needle. I'm just going to go on the overhead camera again. There's the little tunnel that I'm doing and I'm going to start sewing it on so you can um, turn it over and I'm literally sewing this into the into that edge to secure my thread as I've done as you've done before um, exactly the same nothing's changed and then um, sew this into place so I'm sewing just one side on first I've got quite a long thread there so I'm doing this really close to the edge um, and same stitch over and make it nice and tight so keep pulling it tight check that it's in the right place because you don't want to knock the wall um, over um, so don't sew it too close to the edge that it pushes the wall out on one side. And keep sewing that. I think after this I'm just going to lie down and don't move in case other misfortunes happen to me today. So far so good. They say it comes in threes but it's already come, come in five today. So no more <laughs> somehow. Some, somehow something is happening. So I've sewn one side on, a bit wonky, but it, does, it doesn't matter. And now I'm sewing the other side down as well. So you could go across, if you don't want to cut the thread and start over, you could sort of um, make it go across underneath so you can't see it. Just make sure you don't, you go far enough or not too far. And then Sew this on in exactly the same way. Um, if it if you need to flatten it down a bit, don't worry about it. You can you you can always um, manipulate it to stand up again. So you're sewing one from the inside and one from the outside. That's what I've done, especially because one is in the corner, and um, so I'm going along the edge of that. This core felt it doesn't look great on the overhead camera, does it? Because it's like it all looks like the same, but it's um, 
I'm nearly done with this and then we can add a bit of um, a bit of needle felting into um, the whole project by adding mud maybe you maybe your pigs have got flowers um, maybe this is a vegetable patch I don't know you can this doesn't have to be a pigsty you could make it a, a little veg patch it could be a fairy garden you can cover it entirely it doesn't have to be that brown muddy color it could be um, a nice color you can make it you can um, could be all kinds of things it's it's your project you can this is just a, an idea of how you can make um, a, a more structural um, building or whatever you want to call it right so there's the there's the um, fits my whole arm in will fit the pig in da, da, da. there it goes popping out when it's ready that's it. So now I have made um, the the basic um, basic pigsty construct with um, a little little um, shelter here. Um, you can do the following next. Now I've got my earth mat here underneath already because if you're felting into um, into this, it, it's probably nice to have quite a large surface underneath. So what I've done with the other one is I've I've put sort of a, a surround on there. So if you've got some brown colors, muddy colors, or anything like this is left over from the landscape um, picture, um, three week landscape picture tutorial. You could just color in, um, you could make a mud bath here. So, you know, you could color this in and make a mud bath. So, just literally felt it down. Couldn't even use a, a multi tool. Don't know if I'm safe with a multi tool today. And just stab it straight into your felting, um, into into the pigsty pigsty base, and then straight you know make sure you've got a felting mat underneath, obviously. Um, so you can do that and build it up and um, and whatever you want to do there. You could color in this um, this roof. So I've I think I've um, used a little bit of um, you know like it could be um, what's the word sort of mossy green or something like that. Let's just see if I've got any mossy green here. Could be little little curls, little green curls. It could be, or maybe you have flowers growing up in your pig's diet. I doubt that they stay there for very long. The pigs will probably eat them. But you have you could have sort of like um I'm trying to find the word. Is it like algae? You know, when, when things get slightly wet. So you could decorate your pig's dye in that way by putting um a bit of green on the side you could color it in maybe pepper pig lives in there and everything's pink you could do that too that's absolutely fine if you need to um stabilize the side a little bit there's nothing stopping you just stabbing straight into the um structural wool so not even adding wool onto it because you're literally stabbing the two sides together so um the wool is, is, is felted, the structural core wall is felted, but not that much that you can't stab fibers through um, to the other side. Just make sure you don't stab yourself. Oh, I have to make sure I don't stab myself, especially today. So that has made that, um, that's fused that together. If you need to um, make the, uh, the wall stand up a little bit more straight, again, you can just needle felt into it. So you're giving, you're re-emphasizing, no, that's not the word, uh, you are, um, well, you're just making that a little bit of a straighter wall by stabbing into it and, and stopping it from leaning over. So that's another tip I can give you um, about this. And um, the rest of it is really entirely down to you. And then um, it will all be ready for the pigs to move in when you are making them as of the first of um as of the 1st of um, May. I promised you I would show you what's up next week. So for the mug, no, the bug in the mug, you will get our Makers My Happy Place mug. And there's the bug. So he can hang out in there, um, have a good time. And I, I will make this um, little bug with you uh, next week, Tuesday. And um, if you want to um, find out what the wet felted flowers look like, there's one here. That one is, um, and that's sort of the size that we're aiming for. There's another one here. 
and oh you these are all made with this wet felted um starter pack so you can make um um any color that you like with obviously with what is available in the pack but there is a really huge range of colors in there different fibers as well so you get some curls for interesting um texture and some um white um non animal fibers and they they behave a little bit like um like silk so they crinkle up which is really lovely um we are also doing the truck so the truck is a very it could be a flower flower um pot the truck is a very simple concept with uh, two handles on either side it's um using pipe cleaners um to um to create it and um, it's 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 really quite handy if you want to make a little container or a little bucket or something like that with two handles and then of course you can um, also add the vegetables into it which is another um, I will I will start off and show you how to make the vegetables with you on um, that truck um, tutorial and then the little fishies I don't think I've shown you these in um, for real yet oh they're here actually maybe I can go the other side of them there you, there you go, that's the little fishies. They are, um, there's eight of them here. So starting with a neon pink flamingo, um, flamingo color, neon yellow, neon green. There's the uh, green blue green shimmer. There's our um, Australian um, turquoise, the aqua and the um, seashell shimmer. And they all have features of the other wool wolves on them so you can make 24 of these and they are they're fat little fishies so they're not they're not um flat they are fat fat little fishies not flat Ooh. um so that's um that's that and remember you can win yourself the idea um princess kit if you tell us a lie if pigs could fly tell us a lie so that's still open we will close this in about um five minutes so then um then nothing, nothing will happen anymore. Unless you're watching this on Thursday um, live this week, then you will get uh, another chance to win um, at 7 p.m. on Facebook. And that is on our main page, The Makers. And if you ever want to find our page on Facebook, then it's um, squigglybitthemakers.co.uk. That's our social media handle on Facebook and on Instagram and on Twitter. We are just at The Makers with two S's. and um, if you haven't liked the the tutorial yet, give us the thumbs up. It's hard to it's hard to squeeze my oh my goodness! I really can't show you the inside of my hand. <laughs> I think it's getting worse because I've been moving my hands around as well. Um, I'll be fine. I'll be fine by Friday. Hopefully, um, it's all gonna be um in the past. And um, yes, anyway, not running is fine. I just can't do anything. Why no push ups? No push ups. That's for sure. So um, just give you a little bit more maybe on, let's decorate this pigsty a little bit more and um, just give you a bit more um, of ideas here. So there's an area here that could be, um, or maybe I show you also what I've, how I've um, established the sides a bit. I've actually got um, a three needle felting tool here with two needles and that's that's really quite nice to go in a straight line and the way that I've stabilized the wall is by just stabbing literally into this area here and that uh, makes the wall stand up a bit um, more stable if your sewing isn't as, um, as strong or maybe you've made that wall a bit too, too um, tall and it's flopping over then you could um, just and that that is definitely now giving it more um, stability. If you want to fill in this area, you could make a surround, like a pig, um, a little piggy mud bath. Just color it in however you want to. Um, and just start adding different wools over the top. That is something you could definitely do. And I have done with the other one as well. Um, you could be really creative and, and find ways of closing this gate. So you could even, you know, if you wanted to, you could sew something on there that um, that will um, allow you to close and open the gate. I'm leaving that entirely to you. And then just add lots of um, different textures into this mud bath. If you've got bits of brown wool left, just um, put it in there. It already looks quite muddy with um, this particular 
structural core. They all look kind of different, the core pieces, um, depending on what what they found to felt into it. Um, there's always a bit of a, um, a hessian scrim inside, and that gives adds a, um, st that stabilizes it. Just making that all a bit more upstanding. And um, there we go. And I hope that um, this is sort of given you ideas and inspiration to make your very own pig style. I know that you will have lots and lots of wonderful ideas to make this more pig, pig homely, you know, welcome the pigs home. There's the trucks in there now. Um, you could even cover this whole area that I've left open here. So this part here at the moment, you could put something else there to feature it. You could have a, um, maybe just literally a bath. So make a mini, a mini surround and have um, a bath there. I just, I am just, I don't even want to give you more ideas because I just know, I just love it when um, you all are using your own imagination and you surprise us by coming up with these wonderful ideas. So um, I think that's pretty much um, what I can offer you today. And um, please do um, join our Every Wanna Maker group. Watch on Thursday, and of course we have a winner to announce as well, which we um, which we're drawing as we speak. So just hang in there. So the so we have got a winner, and it's um, it's Joe I, and I is just the initial for the surname, of course. So we don't give um, full names away. But Joe, uh, please do give us a message on our um, email which is info at the makers double s dot co dot uk and let us know that you've won today you've won yourself the princess Elia um needle felting kit and on thursday it will be somebody else so whoever is winning this on thursday i don't know, know your name yet but uh, do exactly the same send us a message and then we'll get your details and we will post this out to you in no time and um and that's um so pretty much what i wanted to tell you today is there anything else that i've forgotten oh yes talking about fairies and princesses just i've mentioned it before but we have now got all of our um, 2020 and 21, so um, all 12 fairies from our first subscription box for fairies the first year. We've, they're all available now as PDF instructions, so you can buy each single one. And um, if you haven't got the whole collection yet, at least you know how to make them. And of course, um, Alicia is doing a Zoom, a free Zoom um, session on Sunday this week coming up uh, this Sunday coming up at 2 p.m so for this you just pop us pop onto everyone a maker and ask um, when's the zoom for fairies or find it in the posts you just have to scroll down and you can do your design your own fairy but of course if you need some help to make any of those Alicia has done them all she will be able to um, to help you too oops that's the wrong thing where's where's it gone excuse me there we are number six that's gone wrong now as well I'm counting like I say once I've done this I'm just gonna lie down and not move anymore because who knows what else might go wrong so um let's just have a last quick look at uh, some of the comments um and um yeah everybody's saying congrats Joe and um what else have we got Oh, there's lots of people have jo joined that I haven't even said hello to. So there's there's Rose and um, I'm reading backwards again. I have to get the hang of this. I'm terrible. Ashley is there. Oh, so somebody's um, making, are you making, um, oh, you're making cars. Okay, you see, this is what I mean. Okay, I'm going to try and start at the top now. Um, oh, Jude likes the fishes. Um, Ashley says, I've just been making felted soap. This is something that I want to do um, in June. So keep uh, a watch out for this. And um, we we have got exactly the right soaps to do it with. It's always put me off a bit to do it because I, I wanted to have really special soaps. And it's these are the little, little off-cut soaps that we are now selling um, for you to wet felt. But when we do a wet felted soap tutorial, it will be felting around the soap so that you you have a wool layer and it's really nice um you can use it as a flannel at the same time as a soap and um obviously you don't share that soap it's your personal soap um but it's a really nice way to um 
to dress up a soap, why ever not? And um, Lorna says, oh, Lorna says, I bought some of the structural stuff, not done anything with it yet. I was thinking a puffin's nest burrow. Oh, that's a good idea. They they go down into the earth, don't they? So you could make it all, yeah, you could make it like this, but have it inside. That's a good idea. Um, yes, definitely a uh, thumbs up. That's what Jude's saying. Thank you for reminding everybody, Jude. And, um, okay, so I'm reading backwards again. Um, okay. The piggies can escape. I'm again, I'm reading mid sentence. If pigs would fly, let's read some more of the. Um, I would do less crafting and focus on studies. No, we don't want you to do that. Um, oh, I just, I, there's already ideas coming in um, what you could make instead of a pigsty, which is, you know, not everybody's cup of tea making a pigsty unless you're a subscriber and you're getting pigs. Um, but then you could become a subscriber. Remember, our subscriptions are completely um, without a contract. You can unsubscribe anytime. You can skip boxes. If there's a box that doesn't, you don't fancy or maybe you've run out of time, then you can skip that particular box. And uh, you can also change um, when you get the box, which time of the month. So it is, um, it's completely, we, we want you to be really excited about the subscription boxes. But if you are not getting the pigs and you don't want any pigs, then use this tutorial to make anything else that you need to um, house, whether it's um, animals or fairies or cars or anything, whatever. I'm sure you'll come up with amazing ideas. So I can't wait to see those ideas on Every Wanna Maker. We're also on Instagram, so you can always um, uh, tag us in your in your story or um, on your feed and we will share, um, we'll do our best to share it as well. That would be amazing. And give us the thumbs up on YouTube and subscribe and um, tell all your friends to subscribe as well. So that's all from me today. I hope you've had a good time. Remember, next week is the um, the bug in the mug. So we'll, we'll see you on Tuesday. But before that, I will see you um, on Friday to um, unbox most of the subscription boxes because I'm not allowed to do it with uh, the surprise box. But in any case, it's going to be a good one. So take care, everybody. And I will see you this week later. I'll wave my hand really fast so you can't see that horrible plaster I've got on there. Bye, everybody.